Hopefully you'll stick around to the end. You'll find out exactly what that is. Nine years ago, my husband and I got married and we had to have that awkward conversation about money. And so in this video, we're gonna go through those five different things that we actually decided nine years ago that we would actually action and that they would actually help us to live a life that is perhaps a little bit minimal for some, but it would help us to save money and to be able to achieve our financial goals that little bit faster. This is the journey that we have been on and hopefully it'll be inspirational for everybody else as well. I wanna say that you probably wanna stick around to the end because right at the very end, I'm gonna tell you the particular thing. There was one really big decision that we actually made nine years ago when we got married and it's had a very big impact on our finances. It's a pretty big deal and hopefully you'll stick around to the end. You'll find out exactly what that is. So the first thing that we actually decided was perhaps something a little bit different to what you're expecting. We actually decided to get a wine subscription and this is a subscription to a wine service so that Every, for us, three months, a delivery of a dozen wines turns up at our door. And really, in the beginning, we actually used a lot of these wines when we would go to friends' houses or, you know, to parties where we're expected to bring something, but we perhaps weren't able to spend a huge amount of money on whatever that thing was that we were bringing. But we actually found that by bringing a bottle of wine as what we would take to somebody's house or to a party and having it via a subscription service, it meant that ultimately we were actually spending less on those impulse purchases for when you're actually going to a party and you need to take something along. And we found that actually it was really, really helpful. It meant that we got to try different wines that perhaps we never would have tried previously it meant that we're able to help some of the smaller wine producers in various regions you might be thinking but hold on edwin what about things like christmas and, and other events and the reality is that many years ago i actually set up a subscription for wine that wasn't just what we've been discussing now but i also set up a specific subscription that was for christmas and actually We've just had this particular delivery because you know it's right around Christmas time while I'm filming this. And that then means that I've got a dozen bottles of champagne that I can actually take to events because there are a lot of Christmas events right now. But it also means that come Christmas day, we actually have a whole lot of very chilled, very nice sparklings and champagnes to be able to share with our friends and family. And so being able to put that order in place earlier and actually having it just set there so it's all the time, it's just coming through, it helps us to budget, but it also means that, you know what, the cost of those wines, especially for the champagne, that's actually paid for quite a bit before the brunt of all the Christmas costs. So that's one thing that perhaps you hadn't thought of that you could consider looking into, especially if you do love wine like we certainly do. Over the last nine years, we also decided that actually keeping track and comparing the prices of some of the very basic things that we actually buy on a relatively regular basis was a good option to actually do. And I'm talking super basic, things like toothpaste, toilet paper, dog food, these types of things. They're things that when you continually buy them, you may not necessarily know the price increase that's slowly happening on these particular items when you actually go to the shops. Not all the time, but every sort of three to six months, we'll sit down and we'll look at what is the cost of toilet paper if we continue to buy it from Coles or Woolworths or Audi, is there a better option out there? And I can give you a perfect example of this. So I would say maybe a month ago, we actually were looking at the cost of popcorn kernels. You know, the ones that you put into the pot and then it sits on the stove and over time and you then pops and kids love the sound of that popping and the smell is amazing. 
to be able to make popcorn when you're watching movies at home. We go through an enormous amount of popcorn. It's part of, I guess, having three small children that love to watch movies. So we actually were looking at the cost of popcorn and I'd started to notice that actually the cost of popcorn kernels at Coles and Woolworths had progressively been increasing. And while it might see insignificant, when you are buying large quantities of something, you start to notice it. So for us, it was actually popcorn kernels that made me then stop and think, well, hold on, where are other places that I could actually buy popcorn kernels? And now we actually buy our popcorn kernels, along with some other things, via Amazon. Amazon actually has an enormous amount of products there that are just general, consumable products that you are probably using in your day-to-day -day lives and they're probably selling you for a slightly cheaper amount. We now get our toilet paper from Amazon, we get dog food from Amazon, we definitely get our popcorn kernels from Amazon. And let me put this into perspective. It isn't massive amounts of money being saved, but it is money being saved. And that's the important part. Now, weirdly have a subscription to, uh, for popcorn kernels, I'm paying 39 cents per 100 grams. That's a 10 cent saving. And while, yes, it's not a huge amount, it does add up because for us, we eat popcorn. We eat a lot of popcorn. So it was worth actually just making that minor switch. You might have something that you actually pay slightly less on. And I'd love to know what that is. If you've got any of your own examples, please put them in the comments below so I know too. So speaking of subscriptions, we are like everybody else. We have gone through that period of having a subscription to probably everything under the sun and have since been able to curb this spending and realize ultimately a lot of it was a waste of money. So back nine years ago, you could certainly get subscriptions to all sorts of different things, but we did keep it under wraps. There's something about having children perhaps, but all of a sudden we discovered that actually we had too many subscriptions to too many different things that we really, we weren't using. And so we actually spent about a month going through and looking at the subscription payments that were coming in and then deciding, do we actually need that subscription? Does that subscription service provide value to our lives? And for some things they did, for others they didn't. We found that ultimately we ended up getting rid of Netflix and we got rid of Stan and we have kept Amazon Prime Video. Now, Amazon Prime Video also gives us free delivery on Amazon. We also have Daily Wire Plus. Yes, it is very American based, but we still watch it. So we have that, but you might be different. You might have subscriptions to something else that perhaps you're looking at going, I don't actually need that anymore. I don't remember the last time I used that particular subscription. And if that's the case, I would say, you probably wanna shut it down. You can always get it again later if you decide that actually you do use it. But for the most part, for your own budgeting and making sure you are saving something, then it's actually just worth going through and perhaps canceling all of the things that you aren't using. So let's dive into the fourth thing that is one that oh, it's a struggle. And while nine years ago, we made a decision to have a focused, conscious intent around this particular area, a capsule wardrobe. If you haven't heard of a capsule wardrobe, that's perfectly fine. They are slowly becoming more popular, I think. But ultimately what it is, is it means that you've got a smaller wardrobe with a few things in it that perhaps are better quality. So they might cost you a little bit more when you initially purchase them, but you ultimately end up wearing them more often. And while you might think, Edwina, that's crazy girl math, um, there is an element of that, but also the reality is that clothing especially is a consumable product and it can be something that is really a high turnover and you might actually find that it's very easy to purchase a jumper or a t-shirt or a top or pants or a skirt 
and you might wear it once and you may never wear it again or you buy it and you never wear it and this is what we've decided actually is important we want to make sure that we're not clogging up our wardrobes with a huge amount of clothing that we actually just never wear so by having a capsule wardrobe which is really a smaller wardrobe with some key pieces in there i love this particular top so i wear it quite a bit but I've had it for a little while as well. And I could go and I could replace it, but the reality is this is still in a really good condition. And in replacing those items, if we're replacing them with quality and long lasting fabrics and the way they've been manufactured is actually gonna last a little bit longer, then it means that we're not actually I guess succumbing to just the churn of the fashion industry. This final thing is perhaps a little controversial. Um, certainly I've known over the years and over the last nine years when people find out about this particular one, um, they really stop and start to think, oh, I couldn't do that. That's a step too far. And that's okay that's their choice but for us again it came back to the finances to see is there actually a little bit better way of doing things and would it help us financially in the longer run so what is that final thing what is the fifth thing that actually we don't buy anymore um, and that's actually a second car we don't have a second car we are a one car family we've been a one car family since Nine years ago, we now have three children, so our backseat is very full, but we are still a one-car family. And you might think, Edwina, why on earth would you still be a one-car family? Well, I can tell you that right now in 2023, the average Australian is spending over $56,000 on a car. That's just the cost of the car, let alone everything else. So let's have a look at all of the other components that make up a car. And you tell me whether these are perhaps in line with what you're spending. I certainly don't wanna be spending this money, which is why we are a one car family. So the next thing that you've got with a car is, well, you probably wanna have insurance on that car. And insurance in Australia is $1,220 annually, generally speaking. So the maintenance for an Australian just on average is spending about 1,600 annually. Now, you might be thinking, well, the fuel, I have a Tesla, I hardly pay anything in fuel. Okay, that's fantastic. But you've already paid for the cost of the car or you've got finance on that car, which makes it even more expensive. You then have the maintenance and you have the insurance annually on that car as well. And then whether it's a Tesla and it's using the electricity out of your wall for 30 cents or whether it's using petrol or diesel, you are still paying for all of that fuel as well. So I'd really like to know, do you actually still have a second car? And would you ever consider getting rid of your second car to be able to shift your finances and perhaps help you to reach your longer term goals a little bit quicker? Thanks for watching my channel and I really hope that you've been enjoying this content. Still have more coming up, so as everybody seems to be saying, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.